Paintings continuing, tapers are finishing up in the addition, open to sand wall one day. And then we have a number of lights that got installed this week as well. So the electricians have been in here and the gymnasium's all painted now, so and then a number of the cracks have been repaired on the floor and the tile got finished. And now we're hoping to start laying carpet tile shortly. Uh, start with the gym, work our way out there. And sidewalks got the prep got finished on that, so we're hoping to pour concrete next week. Uh, if weather cooperates, and the sidewalks will be poured. And I think that's about it. Anything new? Doors got hung. I don't know if those were in the last time or not. Yep. So I would say that our painting is probably 75% there, so we just have the addition in the back to do. Yeah. <laughs> Insurance is good. So, yeah, 1171 was that uh, you guys are going to put up some temporary fencing on that pond and use that snow fencing for, or use it for snow fencing in the future. This is that still a plan? Mm -hmm. uh, Tinter is just going to organize member writing on the floor, which I think that's all been done now. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then the water filtration system, I just made note that if the alarm had gone off on that, then we disconnected it for now. And you're going to get it going on there. Uh, yep. When it was time to get off, you see the weather. So. Yep. so, other than that, I didn't have any other business as I was standing from the last meeting. We're starting to wind down really and just do the last of the finishes and stuff. A lot of things are getting back together, so it's a good spot to be in. No more surprises, and hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah, I think so. I don't think a lot of the issue get the occupancy by the end of January. There might be the last 3% or 2% of work left, some deficiencies or something, but. I don't see any major issues. Can they move the office before you get an office? What's that? Can they move the office stuff back up here? Yeah, quite often uh, they move furniture in and stuff, and then they just don't occupy the space. But they'll move in a lot of furniture and equipment and stuff before our occupancy. Yeah. They just have to work from home with their office stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just don't ding the walls, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dave Parker, and this is Carlos Ochoa from Parker Architects. We're lucky to be involved with this project, and we've just been seeing it through. It's taken a while, but it's looking great. Um, I think you've probably all seen it by now. If you haven't, you'll be shocked at how much bigger the church feels. Because this goes on and on and on. It feels like an airport. It's really good. I, think, I really hope you're happy with it. Yeah. Well, they be to this week, my name is Carlos Ochoa, and I work for Parker Architects. Uh, I work on the uh, working drawings for Tinter Church, and also visiting outside visiting, you know, to follow up with all the construction. So it has been a very great experience, and I hope everybody enjoy, you know, the final result. Thank you. So Saturday, December the fifth. Update from the Building and Renovation Committee. We're going to do a walk through the building and um, talk about some of the different aspects of what the renovation and how it's been going. So we're going to start off in the front lobby area. Uh, we have our entranceway. We still have the older existing doors in. Uh, they're going to be replaced with new steel doors and there will be windows in them so that you'll be able to see in. Uh, they're going to be similar doors to the ones that we're going to show you at the new entrance way those ones are aluminum but these ones are going to be steel so today the guys are actually here working right now and they're tiling the front entrance way uh, we've carried the tile in a little bit further and um, then at this point it's going to be transitioning over to carpet you can also see we've got the new windows in the front foyer um, not as many small square panes they're bigger panes and they're fiberglass, correct? Yeah, fiberglass windows. So um, they should last well, and um, they're not the small panes. 
and hopefully we don't get the leakage in the fogging like we were getting with the other ones. At this point, it's going to be carpeting going through, and the carpeting in here is the same as the auditorium? Yes, so it'll be a nice uh, green, beige, gray colored carpet tile uh, that will go through the hallway here into the auditorium. There will be a slight difference in the pattern of the floor, so hopefully that'll look nice once it's done, but it'll be good. One of the challenges that we're running into as well is how uneven the flooring is. And if you look where they did the carpet or the tiling here, you can see how much floor level or they had to put in to actually get our floor level again. It's looking like it's about an inch there by the time we get against the wall. So it's going to be nice to have everything back on the level again. Are they putting leveler on here as well? I'm assuming that they're probably going to kind of fan it out so it's a very light transition. We won't have a drop. So I would say they're going to fan it out and um, it will be very gradual. So we're at transitions. And then coming into the hallway, you're going to notice the chair rail's gone. So we've come out of the 90s into the 2020s. <laughs> and then Crystal's office. Sorry about the echo, but Crystal's office uh, got new windows and the walls are being painted. And there are new plugs and covers going in all the electrical outlets as well to bring those up to date. This will be our new resource room in here. We've closed off the window and closed off the door to Noel's office to give us more wall space for an um, extended counter and cabinets. The photocopier and everything from the original resource room will move in here. In Margaret's office, we'll move to where the old resource room was. And then this is our minister's office, Noel's office. So it's getting repainted, obviously new plugs and um, covers on the walls and new windows as well. And they just got um, framed in this week. It's not called framing, what do we call it? Trim? Trimmed in. Uh, these ones at one time before the trim was off and they had blinds on them, but those blinds were so discolored, we're not putting those back up just from the sunlight, so they're getting trimmed in and then they'll have some window coverings added to them when it's all done. And then according to Margaret, this is the most important room. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be the secretary's office. Got new windows, the same as in the other rooms. And then new door, and it's got windows actually mounted onto the side here. So she'll have direct um, view of the front doors, and when the front doors have windows in them, she will be able to see when people are, are coming to the front door as well. So here's the new lights that are LEDs. So obviously, uh, new paint on and uh, new motion sensor. So lights will turn on and off as uh, activated in the, in the evenings or whenever when uh, people aren't in the building. So as far as our old mechanical room, there's been really no big changes in here. Um, electrical still comes into the electrical panel room here, mind you. There is a new panel for the new section in one of the classrooms that we'll show you. Um, Geothermal unit number one and two are still the same. Number four that does the front foyer is the same and our water systems all stayed the same in this room. You want to do the kitchen, Ruby? This is our new kitchen. <laughs> we have a lovely little pass-through cut out here, so it'll be nice and easy for doing um, potlucks, fellowship meals, coffee on Sundays, to be able to set that up. New kitchen campers will be installed in a uh, U-shaped pattern around and another set of counter across the back wall. All new appliances, including two large fridges, a stove, a wall oven, 
microwave, over the oven, dishwasher, dishwasher. Well, it's more of a sanitizer, but it'll work. It'll be good. It'll be nice to have this in here. Two doors. There's two, two doors. doors. One from the um, auditorium into the kitchen, and you can come through into the back closet. And the floor is in, I just noticed. Yeah. So it's tiled, the same tile in here that's in the entryway, both entryways and in the new washroom. And the ugly thing in the middle here is a, a grease trap. So it is a building code requirement that uh, if you have a kitchen, you have to have a trap for any grease that might be uh, going down the drain before it reaches the septic uh, system. So that pipe will be cut and capped and then they uh, you may have to do some adjustments there, but uh, generally that will be the color. Maybe we can hide it with the carpet. So then, um, this is our new fellowship area. So it's been opened up. The wall behind the mailboxes is gone. Uh, new lights have been installed in here, as well as a motion sensor that will turn the lights on in this area, automatically turn the lights off afterwards. There's going to be a glass partition that will go across here so that room can still be used as a classroom. So it will actually slide the glass partition and it'll be stored in this position. That's why the wall is built out wider here for the glass partition to fold and bifold against that. You'll notice all the outlets on the wall to the south and those are where um, shelves are going to be for the potlucks um, so people can plug all their crock pots in. And yes, Carrie, they are all on separate circuits, so you won't be blowing fuses all morning. Um, nothing to worry about there, but they're all on separate circuits, so um, everything will be good come potluck day when potlucks become cool again. And there'll be a whole bank of candor and cupboards there as well, and um, some on either side of the wall, and an open space in the middle so that we can put our TV back up in here so that it can be used for classroom or meetings. We haven't really determined about the glass. Um, want it to be open and airy and light, but at the same time there should be some, uh, what do you call it? Frosting? Uh, yeah, frosting or some, yeah, essentially so or Privacy? Privacy, that's the word I was looking for. So looking at uh, putting some frosting in there to still let the light in, but to also provide some privacy if the room's being used as a classroom. And then on the area where we go from the fellowship room back into the auditorium where our fountain used to be, there's actually going to be a new fountain installed in there slash water bottle filler. Um, so you will be able to fill your own personal water bottle or use it as a fountain. And if I recall correctly, it's going to be tough, right? Yes. Yeah, it's going to have a sensor on it. And no uh, kitchen door on this side here. No kitchen door in this end. So that's going to leave that area that was always congested um, more free for just traveling in and out. And it gave us more camera space and cupboard space because we closed that wall. So this is going to be the new infant care area. Sorry about the echo again. This room got new windows as well. And then there's going to be a sink mounted in the corner. So for the infant care, you will be able to have water, hot, cold running water for, for cleaning up. And counter in here, Joey? No, just no, the sink and counter. Just the sink and counter right in the corner. Pedestal sink. Right? Pedestal sink. Yep. Show that in the last video? Did you show these last time or no? Yep. yep. So, hallway, auditorium, front entrance is this tile. Um, offices and classrooms are split half and half, so half of them have this color, half of them have this color. Can there be a border around them using the other tiles? No, um, we were talking about doing a border, but we decided that might date the look a little bit, okay. so we took the border out. It'll be nice. Again, different patterns in each of the between the classrooms and offices and hallways. So. And the nice thing about these, we have these actually in our office at work, but the uh, nice thing is that uh, when we, or if we, and end up spilling any uh, uh, spaghetti or anything like that on it, you, can, if it, you can't clean it. If you can't get it out, then you can rip the tile off and put a new one down. So. so you don't have to be as mad at the kids when they spill it.
They do Long say <laughs> they are supposed to be steam resistant, resistant yeah. water resistant, but again, that's to us only to a certain level. Yeah. And then there's nothing that can help that. Washrooms are staying the same. And then this is going to be the new accessible washroom. Here again, the door is a little bit wider to ha handle wheelchairs. It will have an automatic opener that you'll just be able to touch on the wall to open the door. Uh, there will be a toilet and there will be the sink. And I think there's a air, air dryer. electric yeah. and hand and dryer. And paper towel. And paper towel dispenser in that room. A nice big opening in there so you'll be able to go in and use that one. All wheelchair accessible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fully wheelchair accessible. It's going to be nursery. This nursery room? Yeah, nursery, nursery slash, slash classroom. classroom. And this one? Everyone's pet peeve. The kids getting at the toys, and now we can uh, lock them away. So <laughs> the kids will have to play hide and seek instead. And essentially, we took uh, this is where the, the single spot right here on the floor, but that's. Uh, where the existing geothermal unit used to be. There used to be a closet, so this actually was two classrooms that we made into one large one. Uh, and the geothermal unit has been relocated to the uh, uh, mechanical room, which is just, just across the hall. Yeah, that's good. So, so in this new mechanical room, we've taken the existing geothermal unit that was in the classroom across the hallway, and then this is our new geothermal unit, which is actually going to be heating the new section, so the addition on the back. Um, that's where we put the piping in, which we'll talk about when we go outside. And um, so that's going to be our new geothermal unit. So that now in the end gives us one, two, three, four, five geothermal units. Building is still all heated within ground geothermal units. Do this one? Sure. Uh, so this is the new entryway. So uh, the auditorium, as you can see, has a, put a hole in the wall now. So I'll uh, be able to access the uh, auditorium from both directions. The idea behind this is this will be the new primary entrance. It will be accessible as well, and we're building a new sidewalk entry uh, up front as well so um, coat racks will be on this both, uh, two uh, interior walls over here uh, and then the spot that we're looking for for the uh, mailboxes will be just inside the uh, hallway here so so this is actually a new area new addition and then the existing building uh, used to be this used to be a classroom so the exterior wall is roughly here and we punched it right through and now we have access to the back. And if you walk in this way, so to the right is obviously the existing building and to the left is a bit of the new uh, existing building and then the new addition is just down the hall. Uh, idea behind this door here is gonna uh, provide some security uh, where we can um, make sure that the kids are protected at, uh, in terms of the, the Sunday classrooms. Um, and the location of the nursery, actually there's two doors to the nursery slash meeting room, so it gives us the ability to uh, protect that classroom uh, uh, behind, the, behind the glass door, or uh, lock that door and allow this one to be accessed uh, to be used as a, as a meeting space as well. Heading down here then will just be the new classrooms. This is a new larger classroom again, new windows have been installed, lighting has not gone up yet, the walls have been, looks like it has their first coat of paint on, their primer on it. So I think this is actually the last existing classroom. So that was your existing uh, north wall and then everything beyond that is a new addition. And you'll notice there's a height difference in the ceiling? Yes, height difference. So this will be our last low classroom heading to the north. Right here is where you cross over into the addition of the building. 
coming into the new section. You will notice that the ceilings are higher. Obviously new windows, and then this is where our electrical panel is in this particular room that handles the electrical load for the addition. There is a vault pit around the ceiling in these classrooms, and that's where our heating system is. So um, rather than just coming out of the ceiling like in our other ones, there's actually ductwork built into the vault heads in the addition. new classrooms of the addition. Five are exactly the same size and then the sixth one is the uh, truth classroom so replaces the portal. And both the black back classrooms uh, have access to the uh, back area. So they both have the doors that will open in onto the little uh, covered patio if you want to call it. And again these will be locked during the day. Um, so the idea is uh, they can exit out if they have outdoor programming, but uh, it's also secure from uh, people coming in. So, yeah. so, so not entry. These doors are not going to be entry doors. We're telling you now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this door and the door that we go into the truth classroom won't be entry doors. They'll just be exit doors. And emergency yeah, exits emergency as well. Exit. This is the one that's aiming to be the truth classroom. Here again, you've got the emergency exit door out onto the little porch area there at the back. And this one does have a couple of small windows in the sides of the doors as well. Makes a nice open concept. <coughs> nice and bright. It should be a good room for the kids. And Joey, you're putting a, uh, another countertop in here? Yeah, a smaller countertop and bar fridge. Just a small area for them to have their um, coffee, tea, and hot chocolate treats that we usually have on Wednesdays. I understand that the kids are very eager to get in here again. So. Into the auditorium. Um, you'll notice that we built an area in the back corner where the sound system is. It's been raised up a little bit. Um, that's done a couple of things. It's given a better visual for the people operating the sound and the computer for the screen up front to see what's happening as well. All those wires that used to lean against there, lay on the floor against the back wall, are gone now. So they're actually all up into the attic and into the wall and they're fed in underneath. So everything is hidden, not laying on the carpet, gets rid of the trip hazards and gets rid of the fact that if somebody's sitting against the back wall and they bump the plug out, we don't lose our sound system and audio visual anymore. There has been some grinding and leveling done on the floor in here. You can see the difference. Um, they've ground the center down, patched it in, leveled it out as best they can. The stage area has been pulled out and it's going to be getting carpeted and we're also getting new wheels put underneath it. The existing wheels underneath had a neoprene coating on them. That neoprene coating's broken off on over the years. Um, some had flat spots, so they are getting new wheels put on the stage, so it'll still be able to slide back in where it used to be kept, and we'll still have the um, functionality of that. Walls have been painted, actually, first coat went on this morning. Um, Jody was here this morning for some floor signing, and she was commenting, she didn't realize how yellow the walls were, and how much brighter it is, and how much whiter it is already just with one coat on, so when the next coat's on, I'm sure it'll even be better. And then we've got the new windows that have gone into the north side and the south side of the auditorium. And um, that's just going to bring some natural lighting in. And there will be some blinds put on there that are power operated. So we will be able to darken it when we need to. At the front of the auditorium, we've closed in um, behind where the baptistry used to be. The hole up top there is actually an outlet. That's where the power is going to be for the power screen. Um, it's going to be returned to its regular position um, for, our, for our services. And then we'll make our way... Oh, one other thing. Uh, the entrance doors. So we've got the two entrance doors at that end. We've got the entrance door on the east side. 
and the new entrance doors here, those are all new doors. Um, they were getting pretty beat up and there's going to be new hardware and new closures on them. So I'm sure if you all remember back how they were getting kind of ratty. Uh, the new doors are metal instead of the older wood and fiber board that they used to be. And larger windows. Larger windows in them so you do have visibility in and out for safety reasons so nobody swings a door out into anybody. And I believe the hardware on those doors, didn't they have a latch so we'll be able to latch them open? I'm not sure. I think we I think talked so. about that. So I think there, we won't have those little stoppers on the floor anymore. I believe the hardware on those doors will have a latch where you can latch it on the closer so you can prop the doors open. So this is the new storage room where the baptistry used to be. You can see it's been closed in and covered over with plywood. It will be where we can store the majority of all our Bible day camp and other assorted stuff that people collect in churches and be able to keep in a nice dry area, accessible. We're still on day nine to actually get their uh, garage back. <laughs> We're still going to have the storage at both ends. Uh, the upper area, um, I'm trying to think what you call the, like, the loft. The loft area on the far end is still going to be there. That's going to stay the same. Yep. They're installing rails, right? Yeah. yeah. And there will be hand railings too for safety on the stairs coming in and out. And then the yeah. new baptistry, where will it get stored? Down underneath oh. the loft. It comes, it comes down to like three feet, three feet, something like that. It's three by four in long, so. Yeah. yeah. Is it one of those things that once you take it out, we can never get it back? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it actually surprised me. It comes apart into like 10 different pieces and goes back together and it's supposed to take like 30 minutes to set up, um, an hour to fill with water, and then um, it comes with a portable heater so you'll be able to heat the water. Um, yeah, it, you can pretty much set it up and be done with it. And then it compacts down, it should fit nicely in there. And the one thing, the uh, nice thing about the portable baptistry is it allows us to bring out the uh, baptistry into the actual congregation. So. Uh, allows everyone to be a little bit closer to the, to yeah. the event, mm -hmm. so I think it's a nice thing. Yeah, yeah I don't know that we'll want to put it on a stage full of water because it gets quite heavy, heavy. But on the cement for sure. Yeah. We have purchased new shelving already for in here, we've already taken delivery of it, so that shelving is here, it's not assembled yet or anything, but once we take possession back of the building, um, obviously we're going to be coming after people to do different <laughs> tasks. So there will be some assembly required on some things, mm -hmm. and um, we're going to get ourselves organized and um, get things moving in that direction. Those are new windows as well. All windows, every window has been replaced. There's no, no existing windows left. So here you can see the exterior of the building, um, the way the siding's been done. Um, it's all a nice heavy board, a thick board. It's not going to flop in the wind at all. All new eaves troving, all new downspouts. Um, Brandon's going to talk about the drainage on the property in a few minutes, but you will notice that the downspouts on this side go into drainage that goes underground, where on the other side they go out on the surface, but it's carried away. Um, where the little porch is going to be on the back, um, those posts that are there, they're going to be encased in the same color as what the siding is as well. Um, the shingles on the roof. Remember the name of them, Brandon? Certainty. Oh, something max. But they're a, they're a heavy shingle. They're made for the wind. Um, they come with a guarantee. Let's hope. <laughs> so far, everything's been standing up well. They are a good thick shingle. They do have some material in them. And, um, and they're supposed to be rated for good. hurricane weather. So. Yeah, they're a hurricane-proof <laughs> shingle, as they call it. Um, but yeah, the, the metal roof was just out of budget at this point in time. But um, everything's looking good with what they've done. I'm really impressed with the outside of the building. I like the color. I like the design. I hear from people coming into the shop all the time, wondering what we're doing up here. And um, people are really impressed with the look of it. 
Uh, so just in terms of the drainage on the outside, you can see all the our addition area, all of the roof drainage on the east side of the sorry west side of the building is captured through uh, downspouts, and it's it's uh, it goes underground and basically outlets to the pond. So there should be a lot of roof drainage is being collected and and uh, kept off the parking lot. And uh, I don't know if you talked about the sidewalks, uh, but uh, essentially the all along the edge of the building here will be new sidewalks uh, and there'll be parking that will face up against the building um, and there'll be you know, parking bumpers so if no one uh, runs into the building but essentially it'll give you a, again nice uh, accessible access to the uh, to the new entry door um, through a nice concrete uh, concrete finished sidewalk um, on this side over here is we've got some new drainage that we did so let me scroll back this way so where the essentially where that park is trucked or truck is parked tr truck is parked um, we've had to widen uh, the ground out a little bit this is to accommodate for the new sidewalk that we're putting beside the building so essentially the space that we're losing beside the building through sidewalks in the future will be expanding as part of our parking lot down the road so uh, parking will be tight for the first little bit until we uh, finalize the parking lot at a at a later date. But uh, we've cleaned up the drainage, so there's a positive grade all the way from the back of the very back of the parking lot all the way out to the pond. There was a bit of a a dip in here before uh, with the um, underground cistern that we had for former um, fire suppression or fire storage uh, system that was buried underground. But it's all been cleared out, and now we have a nice positive grade. So the the driveway uh, and parking lot should be uh, uh, drained a lot better. Blue septic system, that's a three tank water loo biofilter. Uh, essentially through, through uh, building code and, and public health code, we had to upgrade the, uh, the sewage treatment system. Uh, so our old septic bed was here. It's now been relocated to the other side of the parking lot. Uh, and it's a lot bigger than it used to be. Uh, so essentially the pipes, uh, all this uh, filtration system eventually gets pumped out under pressure over to the filtration bed. Uh, there wasn't room to fit it in the back because of the, uh, we had to put more geothermal lines in here and the tanks themselves take up a lot of space. So we were forced to put it on the other side of the parking lot. Um, also here is we've created a new drainage swale or ditch if you want to call it. It goes, essentially captures all the drainage that uh, from the back side of the property and brings it around to the drainage pond again. Uh, the drainage pond, uh, the main purpose of it was for uh, fire firefighting purposes. So I mentioned that we had a, a previous underground cistern that uh, kept the uh, water for fire uh, suppression. So if there is ever a fire, the fire department has to come and have to have a temporary supply of water on site. Uh, under the new building code requirements, we are required to uh, up update those and, and uh, make the, the uh, suppression size larger, or the tank size larger. Uh, so we ended up deciding to go with a, a pond rather than un under t underground concrete uh, um, uh, tanks, uh, just uh, cost efficiency and it also gave us a, a good outlet for the water as well. So it was kind of a, a blessing in disguise that we didn't really account for that we needed to put a pond in, uh, but uh, as the pro project progressed, it uh, again it was a blessing in dis disguise. It uh, gave us an outlet for our water and, and uh, killed two two birds with one stone. And the fact that we had a, a fire pond and a uh, and an outlet for the drainage as well. And as you can see here, this uh, uh, pipe sticking out of the ground. This is the new fire department access. So. The fire department can come in and actually hook up their hose or their pumper truck to that uh, and it actually has a, a strainer on the inside of the pond at the bottom that will actually pull the water uh, from the bottom of the pond so um, the pond was uh, uh, lined with riprap it's just a, a larger size stone and that was done uh, to keep the uh, uh, rodents out understand that from other churches or other properties in the area have had a problem with the uh, Rodents, what they're called. Muskrats. Muskrats, yeah. Muskrat so, population. So we should, uh, and uh, we will be fencing this temporarily over the winter. It'll be just, just with snow fence or a construction fence. And then in the spring, we'll be putting up uh, um, a chain link fence. So we'll keep, uh, 
just a little more on that. So the way it works is the water from this side comes down the swale that Brandon talked about earlier. You can see a little bit where the snow is. And then from the west side, or pardon me, the east side of the building, it comes around through the swale coming from the other side. And we do have some of the rocks that are lining the pond that are all going to be put around where the tiles are, um, the drainage culverts, I guess I'll call them. Um, so to clean that area up. So any place there's a culvert is where we're going to put some of that rock in the springtime. This will all get seeded in the springtime as well. And then it runs into the pond from this side and um, keeps the pond full. And the pond holds around 18,000 gallons is the capacity of the pond. We had to stay away from the far corner because that's um, actually wetlands with the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority, but our overflow from the pond, you can see the pond's already full because there's water running out. There's a culvert just over from the telephone pole, and that culvert runs across the road. And that's where the overflow water is going to go, and then it ends up in the Spring Creek on the other side. Just remember at the peak in the front uh, of the uh, old building, we had a small Tintern Church of Christ size, uh, sign. So we're actually uh, building a new one that's going to be in, in between the two uh, horizontal pieces of, uh, of wood. And it'll be a larger Tintern Church of Christ. I believe it's supposed to be white and, uh, and it'll be uh, lit as well. So it'll be a nice uh, feature uh, for the building. So just reference back to the dormer, how we'd had some problems in the past with some water leaking in into where our new fellowship area is now. What we've done is on the dormer where it goes up, it was designed by the, by the architect. It used to be flat on the side and flat on the front right down to where the new windows have been installed. So what they've done is they've put a one foot overhang all the way around it. And the other thing was, is the flashing wasn't sufficient where the where the shingles went up against the side of it so everything has been flashed properly and there's been a one foot overhang put onto it so that the water gets away from where the vertical wall is on the dormer so we don't get the build up there where the water is getting in and then just to note on the side of the building again one of the reasons for us uh, creating the swales and having to get the water from the back to the front uh, was the existing building, the, the existing grade or the grass level was right at the bottom of the uh, existing siding, which was actually causing, we think, some uh, water drainage issues and maybe been part of the reason for the, the floors cracking. Also, it was difficult to maintain because anytime you used a weed whacker, you would actually be hitting the, uh, uh, the siding and breaking up the siding. So uh, by providing these swale outlets, we were able to regrade the land and make sure that we gave enough uh, separation between the bottom of the uh, siding and the existing or the new grade level and everything can flow out to the swales uh, all the roof drainage on this side of the building as you can see there's it's pipe now but uh, all that is going to be draining towards the swales which then goes out to the uh, a pond so previously the back area used to be a little bit flat and uh, and it did collect a lot of water and it, and it wasn't really a proper outlet for the uh, for the area so by providing this drainage it uh, make sure that we protect the building in the long run. I think the building code was we needed to be six inches six below. Inches, yeah. So where the siding level is down to where the earth is, we needed six inches where before we basically had zero. And um, so this lowers everything down, brings the water level down, and um, should definitely help with all that. The other thing you'll see on the side of the building is where the geothermal lines go in. It hasn't been sided yet on this one. I can't tell from where I'm standing if the back one has but what we had them do as well is um, we had them extend the protection for the geothermal lines down into the ground better. Um, for all our little rodent-hating people, we feel that's where a lot of the little rodents might have been getting in. So we've gone right down into the ground and blocked that off so that the, there's no access into the building. So it should clean that situation up a little bit better as well. Despite the one we had last week. <laughs> Despite the one that we had last week, everybody saw in the video, but that was probably because the doors are propped open all the time this time of year when the people are in there working. Yeah.